Hello YouTube and welcome. In this video, I'll be showing you how to detect when your service accounts have been compromised. So grab your coffee or your chai latte. Wait. So grab your coffee or your whiskey because this one's going to get pretty damn juicy. So there may be some cases where you have various parts of infrastructure running which relies on service accounts and these service accounts have passwords. Now the obviously obvious expiry of these account credentials is somewhat tedious but as long as you have the upkeep of controlling that password management rotation everything should be okay right? Well not entirely. If you're not aware hacking in quotes or compromising service account credentials is honestly relatively easy because the logon service actually stores the password within the registry. So if you haven't got the right controls and processes in place, firstly to detect on, secondly to prevent, then this can be a, a serious issue. So let's jump right in. I'm currently logged into my test DC uh, and we have a service which is running here which is called secret service. So let's imagine this service account is used for the configuration manager's SQL server, hypothetically. So if we just open this up and we go into properties and then go on to log on, we can't actually see the password here. Now, as I mentioned, if you have a password management rotation system here, uh, there may be credentials getting changed periodically. So if I actually saw this, uh, if I was a standard user and I saw this service account was running, how would you go about obtaining the credentials for this to, you know, do some malicious activity? Well, to do this, we're going to use PS Exec to first gain credential access. And then once we've gained credential access, we're going to use a special tool created by Secure uh, called Secret Stumper. And then once we've used that tool, this will then give us the ability to extract that service account credential from the registry by gaining access to the local security authority subsystem service secret. Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. Oh. That was a handful, a mouthful even. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to launch command prompt as a normal user. Now I already have my tools set up, so I'm just going to navigate to my tools directory. Nope, that's a Linux command. Uh, okay, so first let's run PS exec. Now we're going to run this with a couple of the switches here. So we're going to go dash S for system, and then we're going to go dash I for interactive, and then dash D for separate window, and then I want command prompt. Now once this is opened, we can just do a quick, who am I? Oh, I can't spell it right for a start. We have the system credentials. So now that we're going to do this, uh, now that we've got this account, um, I'm just going to run the get. Uh, actually, let me do the R. Whoops, didn't want to do that. I want to navigate to my tools directory again. And I'll go DR. And here we have the tool here, get me service password. So if I just do a get me service password and then dash H to see what we can put in these uh, parameters. So we can see we've got a, a few parameters here. So the one that we're after here is the dash service. So I'm just going to up key again, and then I'm going to go forward slash service. IntelliSense doesn't work on this, unfortunately. And then it'll be my service account that's actually running here. So this will be the secret service. So once I hit enter on here, and there we go. It's actually dumped our credentials into plain text. Excellent. So you can see now on the right hand side, we, we've got our dump here from our account credentials and it's no way you found this out. Exclamation point, exclamation point. Okay, so now we're actually free to, uh, you know, do some malicious activity with this. So I'm just gonna launch Notepad and I'm gonna do no way, whoops. You found this out, exclamation point, exclamation point. Let me just double check that's correct. Yeah. You actually don't put the uh, the periods in there. Uh, that actually just stays out. So if I navigate to system 32 here, uh, we're going to go 
windows system 32 and then we're gonna find the mmc which is should be right here somewhere mmc okay and now i'm gonna right click and i'm gonna run as a different user so if i go back onto my service account i can see that this is admin user one at centralpoc.local so if i go admin user one at centralpoc.local and then the password here is no way you found this out copy this paste splendid so now i've opened mmc i'm now going to add a couple of snap-ins here so maybe we can add this we can add dns group policy and then click ok so if i actually go in to uh active directory i can check this user account uh let me go to domain admins members oh it's a domain admin excellent so i'm now free to terrorize the network so this is you know pr pr pretty scary stuff so actually let's take a look at the logs so if i go into event viewer and i go windows and then security i'm going to filter the event log down to 4688 which is uh process creation once it finally loads i'm going to hit enter Okay, now I'm going to do a find and I'm going to type get me. I'm going to hit enter on here and here we go. It's found this one here. So you can see that event viewer or, you know, the event logs have actually captured uh, what I've used. So we've got the creator process name, which is the parent process command prompt, which is actually leveraging the, the new process, which is the get me service password along with our credentials. Okay, so all of this should be captured within Azure Sentinel. So if I obviously search for PSXZ as well, just to make sure that we've got that. Excellent. So we now have PSXZ, that's uh, the captured service as well, with along with the command line switches. So this is awesome. We can see that we've launched PSXZ, uh, we've launched command prompt, um, let's leverage the get me service tool. So now what we need to do is hop over to the Azure portal and actually start running some uh, detection queries. Okay, so now we're in the Azure portal. Um, we know that this is a security event. We know that the uh, event ID equals equals 4688. We just run this, we're gonna get a whole array of stuff. Yeah, so obviously searching for that would be tiresome. So we need to filter our query down efficiently uh, as possible. So we know that the uh, command line for the secure file which we had, had the switch uh, forge slash service. So we could include this in our command. I obviously renamed um, that file to get me service password. So if you're actually searching for the, that exact file name process, um, that wouldn't necessarily give you the correct data and sometimes you'd actually miss opportunities to, uh, to, to, to to gather data so attackers are getting you know very creative um, so they may rename you know like ps exec to 1.exe or 2.exe so we have to also get creative here and search for the command line syntax in order for us to provide any real insightful data here so let me go where command line contains and then if we just go forward slash service so if i just hit enter on here okay brilliant we've got all this that's fantastic so let me just open this up we can see here new process yeah give me a service okay awesome um so now i want to filter where parent process whoops parent process name contains and then cmd.exe CMD okay still got it there um actually let me remove that uh, we can just have windows backslash backslash system system 32 
Splendid. Okay, now what we've got... Yeah, that's fine. So my goal here is actually to see the actual service in a column here which is running during the attack. So this will give me a quick... Uh, this will quickly give me insight into what I need to eradicate. So for now, I'm going to have a new line which will be using the extend operator. Uh, with the split function on the command line which will actually break out the syntax which can be used in its own column so if we go extend I'm going to call this running service because this service is actually running and I'm going to go equal split and then within the split I'm going to go command line and then I'm going to do a comma and then two quotes here with a space in between Whoops. and then I'm going to hit run now what you'll see here um, is it's actually split everything up nicely for us so we can actually add more lines into the detection rule here so every um every white space here has been split up by quotes so now that we need now that that's been done we can actually use the mv command to expand this and actually put this into uh, our own column so if we go running service and then hit run so that's exactly done what it's done so here we can see that all the lines have been now been pushed out into their own retrospective columns you can see that the time generated is all the same there's no incremental versions for this this is all just one log that's just been split up uh using the <laughs> extended split command um so now we've got the running service uh i actually whoops i didn't want to do that uh, I actually want to, what do I want to do? I actually want to, let me go where running service and then does not contain and then exe. Okay, awesome. So that's where it got rid of one. So next we can do the same. Let me copy this where running service does not contain and then we can go forward slash whoops forward slash service here and then we can actually go and running service uh, does not contain uh, does not contains and then da and then space I think ah okay so let me just get rid of this I think I had this issue before so if we just do this and then pop that there and then change this into the space and then go does not equals this should get rid of the space and leave me with the running service secret service excellent okay so we're nearly there we've now fin uh, filtered out all of the columns here um, so we can just see if I just run this again real quick we can see that it has split it out here so what I've done is I've removed um, anything with .exe in it because that's not actually the service that we have. We've moved out the blanks and we've moved out the switch here for the um, command line. So we actually have now running service is secret service. Okay, that's awesome. So to finish off, I actually just want to project this query. Uh, I just want to see time generated. I want to see the computer. I want to see the command line. I want to see the new parent pro, new process name. And then I want to see parent process as well. And then the actual running service. So let's like this run. And there we go. We can see that we have our time generated of when the alert was triggered. The actual running service, which was affected, the computer it was affected on. The command line along with the executable which ran with the switch and the service the new process that uh, actually was performed and the parent process which was actually leveraged to perform the new parent process so this is brilliant we've got everything that we want to see so obviously you could do further investigation to find out what that account so what that account was actually uh what that service was actually running on that account so once you've identified that account then you would still obviously further require to hunt and investigate around if that account logged in 
logged on into any other systems what permissions did they have did they change the password after getting access all of these post-mortem questions are which what should be put into your incident management plan uh, which will give you uh, a lot more rich, more insightful data to go on uh, and help you detect and prevent that in the future. Um, and that is how you detect compromised server accounts. Now, to actually defend from this type of scenario, I would highly suggest you check out a built-in feature of Microsoft's called Group Manage Service Accounts, GSMA. This will provide automatic password management for non-interactive applications, services, processes, etc. that run automatically, but they need a security credential. It's a great feature and I've been enforcing it for a while now and I highly suggest you do too. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you don't, well, that's just fine. Please subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, tell your nan. Cheers.